So, let's consider velociraptors as pets. Yeah, walking your dino in the park, playing fetch, and we probably could have it now if it hadn't been for those pesky asteroids. To be fair, we ended up with mammals, which, you know, let's face it, it was a pretty solid trade. But here's the big question. Why didn't reptiles make a grand comeback? Why did mammals rise instead? The answer, believe it or not, involves fungi. Yup, the same stuff that gives you athlete's foot and ruins your leftovers also wiped out dinosaurs. Welcome to the weirdest twist in extinction history. It all started with a very bad day 66 million years ago, when a 9-mile-wide asteroid crash-landed in what's now Mexico. The space rock was moving so fast that it vaporized on impact, punching out a crater 10 times its own size. Now, if you remember anything from your physics class, and no judgment if you don't, high speed means high energy. And that energy turned into a blast wave and heat so intense, it could have cooked anything in the area instantly. And it didn't stop there. Tiny molten rock beads rained down globally, generating radiation equivalent to 20 million megatons. Forests caught fire, wildfires raged across continents, and the sky filled with soot and sulfuric acid. Earth turned into a planetary air fryer. Then came the blackout. With all that debris in the atmosphere, half of the sunlight couldn't reach the surface, making sea surface temperature drop by 13 degrees Fahrenheit. Within just a few weeks, the planet entered a literal impact winter. There was no sunlight for at least two years, and Earth experienced a 15-year-long climate collapse while the dust slowly cleared. 75% of all animal species completely disappeared. Those that survived the initial blast face tsunamis, starvation, and the collapse of entire food chains. If you were a big animal, say over 55 pounds, your chances were basically zero. And if you were a plant, forget about it. No sunlight means no photosynthesis. And that means no plankton, no trees, no grass, and eventually no herbivores, which means no carnivores either. It was a domino effect straight into extinction. The Earth became a cold, dark graveyard. But there was one organism that looked around and said, yeah, this is perfect. And it was fungi. Now, fungi thrive in moist, dark, and decaying environments. You know, like a world blanketed in ash full of dead trees and rotting animals. With no sunlight and plummeting temperatures, fungi had a once-in-a-lifetime chance to take over. And they did. Fossil records show widespread fungal contamination in the period after the impact. It was a global fungal bloom, like the moldy icing on an apocalyptic cake. Now, this was great news for fungi, but terrible news for reptiles. See, fungi aren't just harmless mushrooms. Many are pathogens, and they love cold-blooded creatures. Reptiles, including some of the dinosaurs that survived, were ectothermic. This means that they relied on external heat sources to warm their bodies. In a normal situation, a nice sunny rock would do the trick. Bask in the sun, raise your internal temperature, and fight off infections. It's like an induced fever, because unlike mammals, like me, their bodies don't do it for them. And yes, I'm a mammal too. But uh, there was no sun, remember? And a cold reptile is a sluggish reptile. Their metabolism slows down which might sound like a good thing, because it means they can survive on less food and oxygen. But in this new hostile world, it was a disaster. They had less energy to move, less energy to hunt, and couldn't even digest food properly. Their bodies were colder, weaker, and easier for fungi to invade. Reptile reproduction was hit hard, too. Most reptiles lay eggs, which are usually buried in the soil or left in hidden nests. But with the soil now damp, cold, and riddled with fungal spores, those eggs became easy targets. Spores penetrated the thin eggshells, destroying the embryos before they could hatch. So not only were adult reptiles struggling to fight infections, but their future generations were being wiped out in the nest. This vulnerability isn't just ancient history. We still see reptiles and amphibians struggling with fungi today. 
there's a type of fungi – hey, you try to pronounce this – that decimated frog populations. And reptiles in colder or poorly maintained environments have to deal with fungal skin infections. Which brings us to the protagonists of the era – mammals. At the time of the impact, mammals were tiny scrappy creatures about the size of a rat. But they had a secret weapon – actually several. First off, mammals are warm-blooded, something scientists call endothermic. They produce their own body heat. And that alone gives them a major edge, because most fungi can't tolerate temperatures above 98.6 Fahrenheit. So while reptiles were freezing and being turned into fungal buffets, mammals were literally too hot to handle. Their warm bodies acted like natural shields against infection. And then there's reproduction. Mammals carry their young inside their bodies. This means that their developing babies were safe and warm, insulated from the hostile external environment, instead of being exposed to the unfriendly world protected just by a fragile shell. No eggs? No problem. Their metabolism was another secret weapon. Their fast-burning energy systems let them move more, hunt more, and eat more. And because they were small, they didn't need a lot of food. And here's the cool part. Mammals probably ate fungi. Yep, the same organisms ruining the lives of reptiles. And this fungal diet might have helped them boost their immune systems, giving them an evolutionary edge. Over generations, this resistance was passed down, which explains why fungal infections mostly give us an annoying rash, but still wreaks havoc among reptiles. Of course, not all dinos were cold-blooded. In fact, some massive creatures, like the T-Rex, were warm-blooded. But warm-blooded or not, their size worked against them. You know, giants need giant meals, and in the post-impact world, those meals didn't exist. Being warm-blooded helps, sure, but not when you're too big to feed. Small dinosaurs, however, were a different story. Some survived, and we call them birds. Their small size meant they were lighter and needed less food, and their feathers helped with insulation. Being able to fly was also a flex, since they could reach food in higher places. Their beaks and guts were adapted for flexible diets, and bigger dinos were definitely picky eaters. Evolution did its thing, and the line between birds and dinos blurred forever. The same survival playbook worked for mammals. Small size? Check. Safe reproduction? Check. Versatile diets? Double check. While the rest of the world was on pause, mammals scurried through the underbrush, dodging disaster and waiting for the dust to settle. And then it did. The sun eventually came back. Plants started growing again. Life rebooted. But this time, the stage was different, with big reptiles mostly gone. No more towering predators. No more thundering herds of horned beasts. Mammals had room to stretch, and they did. They grew fast, but not too fast. Mammals never got dinosaur-sized, and that's not a coincidence. Large herbivores today, like elephants, have it easy since their food doesn't run away from them. But large predators are rare for a good reason. Hunting is hard. Your prey sees you coming, so you can't be a big, tall dummy running around. Besides, you need energy to chase, stamina to fight, and a metabolism to match. And you know how that worked out for dinos. Not to mention, mammal bones aren't built like dinosaur bones. The latter had hollow structures, even air sacs, to support their size. But if you stack too much weight on a mammal's bone, it'll snap. Nature has limits, and mammals have learned to work within them. So when the light returned, reptiles were fewer and more fragile, clinging to the edges of ecosystems. Mammals, on the other hand, were everywhere. Before the asteroid, dinosaurs kept mammals small, and mammals, well, they didn't get much say about that. But now, with the giants gone, mammals could finally level up. And fungi? Well, they stuck around too. But mammals had already passed the ultimate test and came out on top. Thanks to their body heat, internal babies, flexible diets, and a little help from some deadly mushrooms, mammals inherited Earth. So yeah, no pet velociraptor. 
But maybe that's okay. You got a cat, right? Close enough. Actually, I think dogs are better. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.